I will everybody said about the bird. Grown men watch this shit. A podcast about indie wrestling. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Grown Men Watch This Shit. Yes. Yes, we do. Indeed. I got to I got to it quick that time because you know, sometimes I draw it out, but I want to talk to you. It's been a minute, it's been a while. We've kept these people waiting. Mm-hmm. It's time to get to the good stuff. And then I did all this stuff here where kind of delayed it even further. But hey, anyway, we're here. We're live. Woo! We <laughs> made it. We made it to your earbuds, ladies and gentlemen. And the orders, I believe, episode nineteen. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. I, be, I, I actually almost died. Uh, literally, legitimately, I could have died, potentially. What? Uh, during, okay, I, I held this for the air because uh, it's really stupid, so I'll tell you. Uh, we had a bit of a snow snap, a little bit of a weather fluctuation up here, getting snow everywhere. And pretty much everyone was frozen out. A lot of people didn't go to work. Well, I had so much back work from our beautiful government shutdown that I still had to go in on a Saturday when no one was working. No one was in the office building. And I I went in there and uh, we have access to the roof of our building. And not a lot of people go up there because it's, I mean, there's no real reason to just to check out the view, maybe take a picture or two. Smoke a doobie. Uh, I don't know about that, but I, uh, anyway, (laughs) that's not what I was doing. I I, I definitely don't do that at work. I'll promise you that. That's one thing I do respect in my workplace is I I don't party while at work. But anyway, uh, I went up there and I was taking some pictures because it's fucking beautiful. And, uh, you have to place a little piece of wood to keep the door propped open so it doesn't close behind you and shut. Well, guess what happened? Beautifully enough. Yes. The wind came around and shut the door behind me and I was alone on the 12th story of my work Even actually I think it's technically the 13th story because it goes up one more floor but I was up there alone in fucking free, frozen temperatures and don't tell me you I left your phone to... on your desk oh, believe it or not I had it oh well <laughs> there you go my phone, so I, I you would have been called. fucked man oh I would have been fucked fucked well, uh, I, I panicked. There's a, a there's another access to the building on the floor below. So I panicked, and I knew I could drop down from one floor to the other because it was easy. I wasn't going to get hurt. And I did so. Then I realized, oh, I couldn't get out of there either. Um, so I got on my phone. Well, and just I called just my from buddy. my end, this sounds like quite yes, the ahead. athletic feat that you accomplished, like some sort of Batman like swinging over the edge of the building and then like – Kicking no. in the window on the, the next level below, and and that's where you you were at this point. Is that not true? It was a more of a hang and drop down. I, I I worked my way around and swing my legs out, and then I just hung over because I knew I would be could touch something, and I felt it, and then I dropped down, and I still had to jump another couple of feet down to the actual building, the roof. So I did so. Yeah, it was stupid, dude. I was like, this is the dumbest thing to do in the ice cold. <laughs> I, I literally, I felt so dumb because I definitely told myself, I hope this fucking door doesn't shut behind me. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm down on the other floor and I'm like, oh, fuck. What do I do? There's a little shack up there on the roof for the guys who like do maintenance and stuff so they can go in there. So I, oh, for the lo- thank goodness the door was fucking open. So I go in there and I hung out I was like, what the fuck to do, what to do, what to do, what to do. So I called the guy I worked with. I'm like, hey, man, I, you won't believe what the fuck's going on right now. I am stuck on the roof of my work. <laughs> or of our work, actually. And he's like, oh, my God, dude. I'm like, how far away do you live? Because I don't need anybody knowing about this shit. Uh, <laughs> kind of give it away yeah, you don't want to be, like, calling your manager for that kind of shit, right? Yeah, that's the last resort. That's the mm. last resort. So I contact him. I was like, how far do you live? 30 minutes, kids. Um, okay, man, I'm on my way. So I sit there just bullshitting, tw- tweeting, <laughs> like <laughs> feeling like such an asshole. And I'm not going to tell everyone I'm, what, what the fuck was going on on Twitter right now. Like, I'm stuck on a roof. Like, <laughs> live tweeting my, bo- the, my shitty life going up. <laughs> anyway, so I'm like, I go out of the little shack, like get some fresh air and think. And then I look, because <laughs> I realize now 
the the roof place that I want to get to or I want to get out of, I'm not at. Like I, the gate that is where I'm at is like shut with a padlock, so I have to find my way back up to that place where I dropped down from, Chris. Oh. I have to climb back up to you the other more story of work the roof. for yourself. Jeez. Oh my god. So I, so I'm the, looking around and I see this huge fucking ladder and I go, okay, perfect. When he gets here, I'll prop this ladder up here and I'll climb on up. He'll let me in. Bickety bam. I'm free. No one the wiser. Well. No, oh man, I'm, I'm waiting, I'm waiting to, with bated breath here. What happened? Ridiculous. More fun shit happens. So I, I get the ladder propped up after some definite struggle, because it's a huge ladder. I have, like, big bruises on my arms. Not from it hitting, just for fucking my muscles up. So <laughs> I set that up. He gets there, and he's like, hey, man, I, I have some really shitty news. And I'm like, what, dude? He's like, I forgot my badge. My <laughs> and I can't even get in the building. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Well, wait, 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 wait. I got an idea. I have my badge in my pocket. What I'm going to do is I'm going to... Take my badge. I'm going to throw it over the edge so you can grab it. And then, you know, come up here and let me out. And I explained <laughs> to him where I had to climb up the ladder. Shit. Well, he said, so, so we do that. I find some duct tape and I strap my wallet to this duct tape. <laughs> and I throw the duct tape and wallet combination off the side of the building. I'm like, because you need an anchor. Phone, you, see? you need an anchor yeah, there, right? Yeah. I didn't want my wallet flying. <laughs> my ID and everything. So I, I am like, hey, man, do you see it down there? And he's like, I think so. Wait, no, I don't see anything fall over. Uh. So I, I look over the edge of the building, Chris. I fucking, this is like a fucking comedy. I should you not. There's a little bit, there's a little ledge just outside where I threw it off that caught my wallet. It's sitting there the oh. day, but with it like less than an arm's reach. Or actually, no, it has to be more than arm's reach because I couldn't reach it. So it was like a good, I'd say three feet away. I couldn't reach it. If I climbed over, there's a good chance I'm going to slip and fall off the fucking building. <laughs> so I have to fucking what look around end. for some. What a demise that would be. <laughs> uh, yeah, what happened? Jeremy came into work and somehow managed to fall off the roof. <laughs> like, what? There's so much story there we'll never know because John's going to run away. I, I, if I was him, I would have. Mm. But anyway, <laughs> so I find this two by four long piece of wood and i go over the edge and i push it off the building and it lands down there john of course gets in the building i climb up the ladder realizing i can't just leave a ladder suspended from one part of the building <laughs> to another i have to pull the big ass heavy ladder up onto the other part of the building i'm on stow it away john lets me in and then this is the kicker the worst part about it me and john go to walk away and john doesn't shut the door behind us and it just sits there, open, without the wood popping <laughs> it open. It's just sitting there. I'm like, what the fuck? Just but a I mean, giant I'm a... fuck you from that door to All you. Right, so I spent so. about 40 minutes on the roof alone, freezing my <laughs> or not freezing my ass out the whole time. But yeah, dude. So I these like, moments the of contemplation shit. of life. Oh, uh, anyway, I had to share because I mentioned something stupid that happened, and somebody asked me to share on the show, so I did. That's fantastic. I love this. <laughs> Look I'm at alive. these live stories. You're alive. All of that could have gone really bad, but, you know, it, it worked out. And you were alive, yeah. sir. Thank you. <laughs> Any roofs you get stuck on? How's the weather down there? <laughs> well, I, I have, in fact, uh, gotten stuck on a roof when I've, I've locked my keys in the, the house, in my, my old apartment, actually. It was, like, sort of an apartment building. The only, like, one where it was, like, a bit of a ways up. Uh, and, yeah, I, I called the, the dude... Uh, to see, you know, the locksmith man thing. You know, that's what you do in this type of uh, situation. His call-out fee and his actual, you know, his quote was like two hundred and fifty dollars. I'm <laughs> like, fuck you, buddy. So I. How many stories up did you have to jump off the roof? Uh, it was only like two stories up, but it was like this really a uh, bit more of a hectic kind of adventure to get to my window. Uh, where I would have to climb in the window because the window was like on this this sort of like facade that's that's facing this like busy road, so sure. I had to go along the side of the building and like climb up. And I, I thought it'd be an easier job than it was, but there was a point when I got up there and I'm just like hanging like one arm off of this like fucking gutter. <laughs> I was like envisioning we're just gonna like you know, give way, and then I'm just going to, like, fall down and eat shit on this concrete below me. Um, 
And I was like, wow, similar to your story, you know, this is contemplation where you're like, I could fucking die right now. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, for, legitimately. Yeah, and then, like, I, I think I, like, swung off of the the uh, the, the gutter onto this, like, uh, sort of roofing little bit of the, of the facade, and I finally got to there, and then I realized the windows were fucking closed. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So at that point, the same I was thing. Just... I jumped from one side, one part of a building to another to realize, oh yeah, this door is also locked. Yeah, like I almost <laughs> fucking killed myself to get to a closed window. What the fucking bullshit is this? And I had no plan on how I was gonna get down from there. And <laughs> this was so long ago, I can't even remember how the fuck I got into that house. But I, I somehow did. I think like a, my my uh, former roommate or, or something had like a a key that I didn't know about. Or, uh, it, something they they came uh, unlocked the door and then I they opened the window for me and I got in but it was okay yeah. but uh, yeah the end of those stories are always the same it's like it was crazy it was crazy and then you know things got settled and everything was okay yeah exactly <laughs> exactly but yeah it's it's fucking hot man to to paint you a picture right now I am uh, I'm sitting here uh, shirtless in my home office I'm, I'm wearing so, like short shorts kind of like. David Hasselhoff, uh, Baywatch Ayo. style. I am uh, just fucking sweating it out. Uh, I know, like y'all, uh, quite chilly over there. So I, I wanted to provide uh, a bit of a, a counterpoint for this Understood. hot bullshit that we're <laughs> yeah. experiencing. It started the thaw recently, but yeah, that's I'm jealous, definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Please in, enjoy uh, my my sweaty ball hotness <laughs> by by proxy. <laughs> <laughs> well, not going that far, but okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is that is me right now. But uh, yeah, uh, after this little preamble, I, uh, I I thought it was good. Uh, it's been a little while since we've just had a, a straight up episode, you know. Like we've had uh, interviews, yes, we've had run-ins, we've had all sorts of, uh, of of craziness. It's been a while since we've just got together, you know, Jeremy and Chris, and just shit talked, and shit. talked about you know some. Some stuff, some live stuff, but but also some some indie wrestling stuff because uh, we we actually watched uh, a, a quite a, a good amount of uh, independent wrestling over this this past weekend, and uh, I uh, I'm looking forward to talking to you about it, friend. All righty, ready. The one show I did miss, which is the most recent GCW show, Ooh. but I did watch. The ICW one, mm -hmm. I watched a freelance show, I watched a Black Label Pro show, so yeah, plenty of independent wrestling. That independent wrestling TV is quite a marvel, is it not? It is sweet. I, uh, I'm, I'm all about it. I, um, it. It's great, In and I was telling a buddy this the other day, in that you just, you know, turn it on, you'll, you'll see on Twitter, hey, this, this show happens to be on streaming live right now, and it may be a show that you otherwise wouldn't have, have you know, procured. But you're like, it's on. It's on live. I can just go on to my, my independentwrestling.tv and boom, I am, I'm there live in person in, in Queens, New York in a, a shitty ultra fitness center or whatever the fuck it was. <laughs> it was great. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I can be there for a, a fucking ICW show. You know, I love it. The, the OG ICW, mind you. Uh, not not that bullshit out of Scotland or wherever. This is the <laughs> the OG uh, early two thousands company that used to run out of the the Elks Lodge. You know, I think of them romantically in that same way of those other like early early two thousands indie companies like USA Pro. You remember that that Frank Goodman promotion? There was a bunch of I honestly that one itself doesn't stick out because. I wasn't on track with all the independent promotions back then. Who were the the key components of that? That was yeah, this this dude that was like not not Jersey All Pro Fat Frank, but another Fat Frank. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yeah, they they're notorious because their shows went fucking forever, like six hours at least. Because half of the show was just you didn't need to watch it. It was just awful bullshit, like ticket seller kind of stuff. So they'd have like the ticket seller battle royal for like these indie schmucks who have no right to be on this show, but they've sold some tickets, so they're on the show. So you just go through all of that. 
there would be some some occasional fun stuff through those first halves, but then the second halves would just be loaded as shit with like all of the, the top indie talent of the time. Let us paint a picture for for listeners at home. You know, you had like a yes. D'Lo Brown, you had an Al Snow, you had Raven freshly off of his uh, his WWE run when he was having that really sweet run with uh, TNA at the time. Uh, you had like Amazing Red, Low Key, the SATs, uh, Matt, oh, Matt Stryker. Uh, from uh, back in the day, not unibrow, unibrow. Striker, no. the, 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 the teacher. Uh, you know, there's, there's all sorts of stuff. It was quite a fun time. Uh, the Hit Squad, we, we can't forget about the Hit Squad. I love me some DHS. Uh, but yeah, it was a, a more gritty, grimy time in independent wrestling, more so than the, the, the polished product that we see in, in you know, PWGs and things like that these days. Uh, but it, it was wonderful. And, uh, I, I'm actually reminded of that feeling a bit when, when we're watching some of these com- these companies on, on independent wrestling.tv, you know, whether it's like ICW because the same company or, or like a GCW where it just has that beautiful, gritty, raw feeling where, you know, someone may die at any moment. And, and it's an exciting feeling, you know. The fans are actually probably in attendance a lot of the times for the off chance it does occur, to be honest with you. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of crazy fucking wrestling fans, especially with GCW, like, especially because they are trying to almost, I wouldn't say go mainstream with hardcore, but at least trying to make it more digestible and appealing to a mainstream audience. So, yeah, I, yeah it's definitely the gritty vibe, man. I but yeah, it. this show, I love shows in rec halls or fucking little gymnasiums like it's the best especially when they have ridiculous names like the black label show i was watching the other day uh had uh in the gym there's basketball hoops but they also had set up like you know those uh, sound condenser pads all around the building to like bring mm-hmm. the noise down like oh, they, it just, how considerate it's, it, yeah, it creates the best vibe. It looks so ridiculous. Like, oh, that's what we need. People are cheering and we're going to muffle that noise. Okay, that probably works for wrestling. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> probably still has a lot better noise than most of those fucking outdoor stadiums that we, we see the manias at and stuff. Oh, sure. Yeah, but yeah, they're, they're real fun. Like the the um, GCW show uh, in Atlantic City was at the, the Showboat Hotel. So just in a, in a casino. Uh, and it had this awesome sort of like rainbow colored uh, roof sail thing that just brought such a happy feeling to a deathmatch show. It was, it was beautiful. It was like you'd look at it and you're like, this is the perfect you know venue for like a, a shikara or something like that. Like, you know, a happy, sure. happy, family friendly, lovely show where we, we, you know, just all have a good time. And then you're in this this venue and then we're seeing insane deathmatch wrestling with schlack it's, it's oh beautiful oh my god that guy's a maniac oh truly truly i mean uh all right so should we should we start on the first show in the chronological order of this which i, I believe was the, the freelance show no let's let, i say we go where we're starting because i i'm actually interested in hearing more about the show that you just began with since i didn't actually see it so go all ahead. right all right gcw their most recent event uh they said it couldn't be done so this show, uh, I, was, I was quite looking forward to uh, ever since the last show um, back in, what was the, the New Jersey venue that Bam Bam Bigelow made famous, ECW, starts with A, what's this place? You're putting me on the fucking spot. He's from Asbury Park. Asbury Park, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was in Asbury Park, New Jersey, not not in the, the famous Asbury Park venue that ECW used to run, but they've got their own, you know, beautiful little uh, venue there. But yeah, on that last show, they, they made the huge announcement that Jun Kasai, the crazy monkey, would be making his grand return to the USA uh, for GCW. Now, last time Jun Kasai had been over was probably at least a decade prior I remember Jun Kasai was uh, doing some pretty awesome stuff with uh, CCW back in the day. Um, and, and really, like, Jun Kasai is kind of like the embodiment of, of deathmatch wrestling in the, the current day. I mean, he's uh, done some amazing stuff uh, in uh, J- Japan for Freedoms. That's kind of like the main company he works for now. But, like, going back, you know, Big Japan and all sorts of stuff. And he's he's just like, he's, he's perfected the deathmatch you know, just sort of as a as an art form. You know, it's like he just goes out there. This is what he does. You look at this motherfucker's back, and it's just 
terrifying. Uh, you know? I haven't watched a lot of his matches, but I've definitely seen a lot of the imagery because people like to share like really insane pictures from deathmatch stuff. Mm. So you'll see these crazy pictures of him. Yeah, like you said, back insane, but just he's his such face a as well. Dude. You look yeah, at that face. motherfucker's face. <laughs> and the face like his facial expression mm. like so much character like through the face you know what i mean like a lot of people sell pain but he's like got this own look of pain going on it's fucking intense yeah like his complete badassery meets uh, I, I don't even a know a crazy monkey yeah it meets well, a crazy it's, monkey it's, it's app. Yeah, it's fucking app, dude. <laughs> it can't be better. Yeah, so I think everyone was very excited that Jun Kazawa was going to be on this show. Uh, but also, I, I think it was actually um, GCW's debut in Atlantic City, uh, where, you know, Atlantic City has quite a bit of history with the indies up there. I remember Jersey All Pro used to run their um, their anniversary events there. Uh, yeah, cool cool place. Uh, you know, kind of, what do we say, that the poor man's Vegas? Or like the real poor man's Vegas? Because, like, is the poor man's <laughs> Vegas the... Um... Reno? Yeah, yeah, Reno. So I guess Atlantic City is real ghetto Vegas. But uh, I'd, I'd love to go there, actually. I think I, I got very into it from Boardwalk Empire. So it's probably a bit of a different place now. But uh, great, what? great show there. Steve Buscemi. Oh, Fucking, uh, I never actually got around to, never mind, we're digressing. <laughs> we are. Yeah, this is what we do. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, so they're bringing Junkasai to Atlantic City, and I'm like, I, I want to watch this show, but um, I with these GCW shows, I'll, I'll be very attracted to the batshit insane ones where they're like bringing back people for like, you know, crazy nostalgia matches. Uh, you know, like uh, when they, they brought in psychosis, I mean, obviously everything with, uh, with PCO or all sorts of the, the variety of crazy people GCW's brought back, but I've, I've not in the past been such a proponent of what appear to be their more straight up deathmatch shows. Um, mm. Like, I mean, I, I watched their tournament of survival and that was an awesome spectacle, but yeah, I don't know. For me, it was a little bit much at times to just watch like a whole show of the, the deathmatch wrestling. Uh, yeah. So I, I almost shied away a little bit from this show. And I, I didn't watch it live because I think I was doing something. I can't remember what I was doing. Uh, maybe I had a nice uh, nice family dinner at Courtney's parents' uh, family lunch at Courtney's parents' house or something. But anyway, I, I got onto this show as soon as I saw on Twitter people were just raving about this. So I was like, oh my gosh, I have to get it. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, that This GCW actually isn't on independentwrestling.tv. Uh, they go live on fight.tv where you can buy the pay-per-views at a very affordable price. Or you can get them on demand a little bit cheaper at uh, mm. Smartmark. And, uh, yeah, so I, I did that. Always good to support Smart Mark, Smart Mark Video. You know, they've been a, a huge, uh, had a huge place in the world of independent wrestling since, you know, back in the day with IWA Mid-South, uh, all that kind of stuff. But, yeah, so I got this show, and the, the best way for me to describe it was uh, just the whole thing was a spectacle. Uh, they had a, a good mix of, like, uh you know, non-death matches, like there was a, a really awesome um, match with, uh, here we have to open things up, oh, KTB and uh, Nate Webb. So, oh, that sounds great. <laughs> that was so much fun. You know, what What more uh, better a guy could you get uh, to, to remind you of those beautiful days of IWA Mid-South and early 2000s wrestling than, than Nate Webb? When that music dude, hits, K- and... KTV's my fucking fave, dude. He's oh. he's like my fave. He's like the indie workhorse that needs to be doing more because he's fucking mm-hmm. awesome, man. Yeah, I saw um, like uh, MLW have been bringing in some some different guys, but I I think KTB would fit perfectly in there. Like so every every one of these shows, he just hits it out of the ballpark. Uh, Kyle means... the Beast. So yeah, that was really fun. I mean, we had a, another real good, just like insane spot fest with uh shane mercer who's a, a dude from um chicago who i think they sort of just discovered on um on the the last chicago gcw show big big jacked up athletic dude um who who can do yeah some he, he does does like a, a second rope um backflip fall away slam oh shit insane to see such a big dude do that 
Uh, but yeah, him against uh, the Fly, Eli Everfly, as we've uh, we've discussed in the past. So this was this was actually the best Eli Everfly I've ever seen, uh, because I think the the big man little man thing really added mm-hmm. like a, a great dynamic to it. Uh, Shane Mercer just threw him all the fuck around, <laughs> you know, like throwing him six rows back. That this like partition up around the edge of the. Um, of the, the wrestling area of the, the venue, which is basically mm. like a, a wall to, you know, separate it off. He just threw Eli Everfly over that. <laughs> <laughs> like Eli is like the perfect working partner with somebody that big. And especially cause the kid can bump like a crazy man. Like yeah. fucking idiot. he's and insane. Sometimes he needs to be reined back a little bit, you know, like I remember that um, GCW show in LA where he was working Marco stunt and yeah. Yeah, Marco's stunt wasn't doing too well after that match with his uh, his injury, and it was it was almost like someone needs to rein these boys in a little bit. But yeah, I thought this this match was bloody perfect and so much fun. Uh, and then maybe uh, my favorite straight up match of the show, other than deathmatch stuff, was uh, Chris Dickinson and Tony Deppin. I of I love this a whole bunch. You know, every time I see Dickinson, I, I love him more. He's like a badass asshole version of Bus Rutten. Uh, he'll kick you real hard, <laughs> slap you real hard, and then fucking have sex with your wife. I don't know. He's a he's a badass. <laughs> <laughs> he is the dirty daddy, you know. And the last part's what really gets you. He like, oh, I didn't see that one coming. I mean, that's not even part of the rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> We're meant to be wrestling. You're over there fucking my wife. What's this? <laughs> uh, the card's actually my butt, a guy I fucking bullshit a lot with on Twitter, AJ Gray. I yes, saw he's in the six man with fucking yeah. Jungle Boy and everybody. That was, was that pretty crazy? It had, what do you think of AJ? Yeah, yeah. Um, he was a, a real good surprise because he was like the only one in that match that I didn't really have any any preconceived notions of whatsoever. Um, so this six way scramble, this, this fuckery scramble, uh, was Teddy Hart versus AJ Gray versus Facade versus Grim Reefer in a great throwback to early in 2000s wrestling with Grim Reefer, uh, Jungle Boy and Orange Cassidy. So I was, I was all up for this match as soon as I just saw those names announced and AJ was the only guy that I didn't really know. Uh, but he really surprised us. I watched this show with my buddy, uh, David. He came around and he was like, all right, what's on? This is what we're watching. Sweet. And yeah, I think as well, he was like real surprised by him as well. Real uh, solid, hard hitting guy. He hit some fucking uh, lariats that turned some dudes inside out. Real good strikes. Yeah. yeah, he can sort of, once he gets some momentum behind him, he can really, really go. So I'm, I'm actually excited to see him a bit in the future. Yeah, everyone was great. Had this like sort of fun story through the match where like Teddy Hart just kept trying to get in. And he kept getting like knocked off or like knocked out of the <laughs> ring. So it's like, oh, is Teddy trying again? Nope. All right. Teddy's Teddy's fucked off again. Um, he also had a, a great bit where, you know, as we know, Teddy's cat, he, he brings the cat to, to every show. He has a, a, a local girlfriend, I'm assuming, who's mainly tasked with looking after the cat during the show. Um, and yeah, he brought it to the ring and then he was kind of like, holding the cat and every guy could sort of get in the ring and he'd be like almost gesture to them like watch the cat you know watch out for the cat and then <laughs> and then um orange cassidy gets in and you can tell he was a little bit irked by the cat and teddy was kind of like you know playing with him a bit like that and uh he, he took the the cat and was like sort of like like almost like feigning an old-timey like underground irish boxing fight between Orange Cassidy and this cat. I'm just like, please don't hurt the cat. And I, was, I was more concerned for the cat than anything at this point. Uh, but then, yeah, um, I think Cassidy was like, all right, I'm, I'm done with this shenanigans. He turns around. And then Ted kind of like puts the cat on the back of his head. And then the cat freaks out and just, I've never seen this, because this cat just just like, I don't know if it's just eternally stoned, but it's the most chill out <laughs> cat you've ever met in your yeah. life. Um, and yeah. I could not believe it. It just like fucking bolted out of the ring and out. And everyone was like, you can see oh, everyone sh- in the crowd just like, where the fuck the cat go? <laughs> no. Yeah. That's the worst. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah, David and I as well were like, oh, fuck. Where's the cat? 
<laughs> and then so for the preceding moments of the of the match, the following moments of the match, everyone was more concerned about where the cat is. You can see everyone yeah. in the crowd kind of looking under their feet, under their chairs and stuff. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, I saw on Twitter people were like, great show, but did they find Ted's cat? <laughs> I, I got uh, confirmed towards the end of this by uh, Joey Janella that they, they did, in fact, find Teddy Hart's cat, and it was okay. Thank so. the lords. Yeah. Oh, my God, that's the best. <laughs> <laughs> Badass match, too. But, yeah, the, the tale of the harrowing tale of this cat was the, was the biggest thing. <laughs> that's the best thing ever. Oh, man. Um, oh, man, I needed that. I gotta. I might have to watch that one. Yeah, yeah, it was it was real fun. Uh, Jungle Boy did some crazy athletic shit as well, um, and yeah, Grim Reefer like really kind of surprised everyone uh, as well. Just in terms of like, he's still innovating, like he's still doing rad shit. Like all these years after the, f- I think first time I saw Grim Reefer was maybe like early two thousands ROH. Um, yeah, same here. Yeah, but dude's still real good. I uh, I hope he he continues to to get a bit of a spotlight on these shows because he can he can go man, um, but yeah overall real fun you know Orange Cassidy is Orange Cassidy, and uh, yeah then then we move on to the, the the death matches here the first one of the night was actually preceding this match with uh, Jimmy Lloyd Eric Ryan and Marcus Crane, and <laughs> this really just got it off uh, to a heck of a start, um, it was like. Oh man, you know Marcus Crane is a crazy man. He looks like he hurts himself more than his opponents on like every single move that he does. Yeah, <laughs> and he's, he's just... like a human uh, crash test dummy. Yeah, yeah, he's just a wild looking fucking methed out dude. I don't know if he actually does meth. If he does, you know, fucking all whatever, you know. People have the right to I like do what they want. If he does, then whatever. Nine ten. If he doesn't, I apologize for calling him back. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you know, if he wants to do a bit yeah. of meth before his matches, that's that's whatever. That's, that's right. A, yeah, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, whether he was methed out or not during this match, I don't know. <laughs> but it was really fun. Um, and yeah, they did just did so much shit uh, to the point Dave and I were just looking at one another and were like. So this was just the first death match of the evening. It was like they did fucking so much shit, like so many light tube spots, so many just real hard asshole light tube spots as well. Where you know, there's ones that just look like you are doing them where you are trying to hurt the other guy as much as you possibly can, not protecting him whatsoever. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, at the different boy Jimmy Lloyd uh, was uh, was great here as well. Uh, really fun. Um, and yeah, it got the death matches off to a, a, a great start. But you know, it was like the thing where it's like, how are they going to top this shit? You think like you, you do your first death match, you know, you keep it a bit tame, you know, you do some table spots, do some stuff with chairs, maybe have some garbage cans. I don't know, but uh, you know, save the, the glass and fuckery uh, before, <laughs> for later in that the card. That glass plating into it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh my God! The yeah, bleeding. That's rough. And oh. Jimmy Lloyd celebrated his birthday this yeah. weekend. I believe he turned twenty-one that years old. That yeah, night. oh that night. Following that show, they had a, a birthday party for him where they had a couple of no ring death matches. Uh, in oh their, great! Yeah, yeah, the building over apparently sounds like a, a good time. But yeah, <laughs> it was it was awesome. And then uh, yeah, afterwards because we remember Jimmy Lloyd won the, the brass ring in the brass ring ladder match uh, on that New York GCW show that we watched a little while back. And he, yep. he brought that brass ring out of its bag. And we thought, oh, yes, I almost forgot about that brass ring. And I think that is just kind of like the, the magic beans. Like it, it just gives you the right to anything. Like he could probably challenge Undertaker to a match at WrestleMania if he wanted to with this brass ring. Star cast. Yeah, yeah, who knows? Um, and But no, he challenged uh, Masashi Takeda, who is uh, probably the top uh, deathmatch guy in uh, in Big Japan right now, who's, who's been coming over for, for GCW a, a bit recently. Uh, dude who can also like just fucking wrestle like a son of a bitch as well. Uh, and that match is going to be taking place as the main event of night one of Joey Janelle's spring break. So I am uh, tremendously excited uh, that we will we will be there in person for that one, sir. 
Yep, yep, yep. Hey, question for you. What is going on directly after spring break? Is there another show playing that you're going to? Because yeah. I, what, show, what show is that? I'm trying to hammer out my, my plans. So um, the that first, G- um, first spring break show is the one that's taking t- place at a tasteful time, not at midnight, at like, you know, 8 p.m. or something like that. And then following it, uh, they're actually doing a, a midnight – uh, show for uh, what, what's the not black label but the other black black wrestling the um... you call it African American wrestling this over here dude. <laughs> that was a terrible joke please don't report us we're nice guys <laughs> we are we are nice guys the the John <laughs> Hennigan uh, black fucking not black star wrestling black something i'm working this out as we as we uh is it black and the brave no that's fucking uh, no, that's, other black yeah it's wrestling school right um family reunion the col- part of the collective uh gcw's collective of shows at the white eagle hall uh it is black craft wrestling yeah. Oh yeah. I was fucking twisting some part of my brain. That was, that was distressful. Distressful? <laughs> is that a word? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Fuck yeah, it is. Sweet. Uh, but yeah, that that should be a, a fun show. Um, that's the one I'm not hundred percent sure I'm going to go to because the prior night there's a midnight AIW show uh, that has some awesome sounding matches. So I'm de- I already got tickets to that, which I'm going to have to like fucking crazily uh go like a maniac from the from the mlw show to to get to uh jersey for that aiw show but alas so the following night is then going to be this black craft show and then the night after that there's a midnight for the spring break part two so i'm like do i want to do three midnight shows in a row that sounds like a real way for me to get myself you know completely fucked up for this this weekend (laughs) I mean, should I play the long game? Should I be protecting myself here? Or should I just be like, fuck it, I'm there. Let's go to this show. I, I think it, like when we went to the original, or the one spring break we both were at, mm-hmm. uh, it was so insane and I was so tired. But had I not been there, I would have been pissed. So yeah. that's usually where the mode I'm going with. Be there, otherwise you might miss something. If, you're, if you were pissed off that you were there and nothing happened, at least you got to see something. It's true, and like we'll already be there in New Jersey, so I don't know. Yeah. There's a there's a crazy Jimmy Havoc looking match that I think with like maybe G Raver, uh, where they have like a chain link death match, where like a chain link spider web or something is going to be like spread out over the the, the ring surface or something. So that sounds what? pretty nuts. Yeah, yeah. There's also going to be like a Chris Dickinson match with. Uh, hang on, I got, I got this on the Facebook. I can I can actually look this up instead of just trying to remember it like a goof. Hang Seriously, 2019 is like the year of putting people together you never expected to have a match together. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Uh, here we go. Blackheart Wrestling presents no apologies. Uh, so. Yeah, we've got Masato fucking Tanaka versus Chris Dickinson. How can I not what go to that fuck? show? Oh, oh my god, that's insane. Yeah, I might have to be there for that. That's wow. Yep, and then yeah. in this Devil's Den match, we've got Jimmy Havoc against G Raver uh, that I discussed, uh, I mentioned before. Uh, we've also got Penta El Cero M versus, of all people, Sam Adonis. I, I was surprised what? when I read that opponent. What? <laughs> what? Yeah. He's the dude that like, awesome. got in fucking yeah. trouble in the UK for saying not so nice things in inclusive shows and does like the, the Donald Trump gimmick down in uh, in Mexico. So And one Corey Graves brother. Yes. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Quite topical with the Corey Graves right now. Oh man. Jeez. <laughs> You know, uh, I normally think, you know, if people want to cheat on their spouse, whatever, you know, not not that nice, but it's none of my business. But in general, mm-hmm. I feel like Corey Graves is a piece of shit, so I don't feel so bad about it, you know? <laughs> he does come off pretty smug and dickheadish, but yeah, I heard him and his wife were fucking separated anyway, so who, I mean, it's none of our business. Who gives a fuck? Did you see him <laughs> go nuts on David Bixen spam on Twitter? I did not. So you know Bix, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, part of their, um, like, he's a bit of a, a, a wrestling journalist. Um, used to be, like, quite tight with the Wrestling Observer stuff. And he does some really good historical research stuff. Um, and he's, he's, like, I don't know, he's spurgy as fuck when it comes to, like, getting the smallest details out of shit. Um, but, yeah, pretty smart dude. I've, I've listened to a little bit of his podcast. And, yeah, he's... Bit he's, of a shit stir. Yeah, um, you could say that. But, yeah, um... Yeah. Apparently, Corey Graves just went fucking nuts on him on Twitter to the point where Bix was like, the fuck did I do? And <laughs> he was just losing shit. So I feel like if you look at uh, Corey Graves from an outside perspective, you can just sort of see him, his mind slowly melting um, through the public forum that is this Twitter. And then this was the most recent thing to come out. So let's so see what happens next, right? Yes, indeed. As but, the world turns. Mm. But yeah, back back to Blackcraft. It seems like a fun show. And then we've also got Matt Cross versus Luchasaurus versus Teddy Hart versus Cortez Castro versus Ray Phoenix versus Mecha Wolf. Fuck. I, I didn't even know about that most recent match. All right. I think we have to go. Dude, I'm just tagging along. I'm sure I can find a ticket pretty much for any show, even ones that are sold out. People are trying to get rid of stuff. But Exactly. Yeah, man. All right. It's going to be the... Uh, I wonder if Alicia's going to want to go to everything or if she's going to sit tight at the at the B&B. Mm, well, this is one that Courtney may end up going to because I got her a ticket. It's the only wrestling show she was going to go to for the whole weekend um, for spring break, which at the time was like the only spring break. Then the second one got added on, but whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Lucky she's yes. going to be with us there in New Jersey. So I guess, you know, she can at least sleep through the show, I guess. She has a, a yeah. knack for sleeping through shows if need be, so that could be a thing. There you go. Yeah, just like make up a nice little bed in the corner while this fucking crazy death match with Jimmy Rave's going on. I mean, no, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Havoc. Oh man, I hope G Jimmy Rave's going to be on the show. That'd be sweet. I, I Jim, he's the, he's that guy that kind of cold shouldered me about the artwork. Really? Yeah, but he ended up coming through, and I guess either a said. He told me his girlfriend must have been reading his messages and he, he didn't know that I had replied. He thought I ghosted him is what he claimed. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, continue. Yeah. So I think that good show now. is going to be real fun. All right, good. I'm, I'm glad that the crown jewel of Prince Nana's... Um, I know, man. Fucking what was the team so called? The Embassy, brother. The Embassy. Yay. <laughs> Alex Shelley, Prince Nana. I think Abyss was in there for a spell. Good times. So many people were in there. <laughs> yeah, you still love Jimmy Ray. I'm glad that he's perhaps not the piece of shit you think him to be. Yeah, yeah. indeed. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, then uh, back to this GCW show to finish up. Uh, then we got yes. into the real crazy death matches. Okay, now my buddy David doesn't watch a lot of death matches. Probably similar to yourself, you know. You, you dip your toe in the water sometimes, but it's not necessarily your thing. And that's oh. okay. Deathmatch wrestling doesn't have to be for everybody. Uh, but it, as we've said before, it's an experience. It's just a, a surreal thing to watch. You know, it's the closest thing that we get to a, a, a public bloodletting in, uh, in today's <laughs> modern society. <laughs> so cathartic. Yeah. <laughs> yes, bleed, bleed for me. Bleed. Exactly. Um, uh, so, yeah, there's, there's a point where you're like, what am I watching? What is this? What am I... This is insane that this is happening in front of paying customers. Uh, but yeah, the, the next death match uh, was G-Raver against Matt Tremont, the bulldozer. and My body double, or my former lookalike doppelganger. When you had a bit more of the beard? Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. I, I, that's, I get it all the time. I was like, oh, is that Matt Tremont? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, all right, cool, yeah. From no, all accounts, I've heard, I've heard Matt Tremont is a real nice guy. All right, so, so I like that it. might be something, yeah. yeah. But holy shit, this may be like the best like U.S. death match I've ever seen. This... Legitimately, yeah, 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 yeah. Like this was just next level to where it like had the emotion of like like top level five star matches in Japan that you'll see like New Japan type of shit, except it's happening with like fucking light tubes and stuff. Like there was a point. Let me let me paint another little picture here for for the fine listeners at home. Uh, but so you know the Masada spot where they they stick the the skewers in the the dudes for it and then like bang them in with their with their palm and then the yes. skewers kind of uh. like spread out. 
They did this Brutal. with like these fucking long like tattoo needles. They're almost like like knitting fucking gimmicks. What are the knitting gimmicks called? Oh, fuck, crochet needles? Yeah, kind of like that, but they were like fucking shiny metal fuckers. And oh, they were probably fucking uh, kebab skewers, dude. Yeah, they look like that. So they oh, did that with fuck. those, which somehow is even more disconcerting than if they were just these oh, wooden they... skewers. <laughs> and they yes, just had a whole no, handful somehow, of them. Definitely, it's metal. Yeah, and they just fucking massaged them into each other's skulls. So then, you know, uh, Tremont is there. He's got them like all fucking splayed in his scalp. We've got a G Raver who's kind of splayed in his scalp, and they've just got like kind of a stare off going on with one another while they've got like, the blood streaming down. And just like it doesn't get much more badass than that, you know, when you've just got these you see fucking it, things into their head. And then, uh, yeah, they, they proceed to then what, what do you do? You get some chairs, and then you go on to hit the skewers even hard further into the guy's scalp oh, with a fucking God. steel chair. And these guys are not doing, st- you know, safe steel chair shots. No hands are going up, sir. And you're just like, what the fuck? And then I'm pretty sure following that, they just like started headbutting one another. So it's like the skewers were just sort of like, I was worried someone's eye was going to go out from one of those skewers, but yeah, fuck. And then the crowd just like gave him this insane standing ovation. And then, yeah, they're just like, just probably like five to 10 more insane minutes on top of that to where it's just like, yeah, the, the level of intensity and like just the amount that you were like into the match, like it, it's, it's bizarre. Cause a lot of the time you watch like a death match wrestling and it's like, you just watch them like freaks at the circus. You know, sure. just like, what are these fucking schlubs going to do to kill themselves for my entertainment? But this, like... It's geeks. They, yeah. They're, they're, like, they're uh, fucking sideshow geeks, man. Yeah. But, like, this, you, there was a level of, of investment in it, if you kind of follow me. And, like, the, between the oh, investment yeah. and, like, just the craziness of it and just everything together was, like, it It was fucking insane dude like yeah top 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 level um japanese deathmatch wrestling kind of thing so i have a, a lot of love for matramont and i think g raver is probably like one of the one of the top dudes doing it today like both of these guys are like rad wrestlers on top of being um you know crazy deathmatch geeks so yeah i love the shit out of that high recommended high recommendation from that and then we got a prison deathmatch between uh. Nick fucking Gage and Shrek. <laughs> oh my god! See, that's where the point where after the tree ball thing, I'm like, oh my god! I what am I? I I know what I'm in store for. <laughs> mm-hmm. How can I keep going? But fucking a, mm-hmm. go on. And how, so, how did you do this? How did you guys do this? So at this point, I think it was during the the matrimon g raver match that david i looked over onto the other side of the couch and i'm just there with my my tasty beer just like yep this is fucking deathmatch wrestling boy and then david who my, my former roommate david by the way uh he was on the other side of the couch and he was kind of like in the fetal position like looking out of the <laughs> corner of the eye <laughs> I try to get as far away from it as possible, but still be there. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was like that, that car wreck kind of thing. You know, you don't want to see it, but you can't look away. So, yeah, I was like, fuck, I, I think I've emotionally scarred David by showing him this show. <laughs> That's awesome. Fuck. But yeah, so then the, the prison death match gets going because we know that, um, you know, uh, Nick Gage spent a little bit of time in, in jail. Um, I don't know the specifics, but I'm assuming Schlack must have spent time in jail, just looking at him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> so they started this out, and Nick Gage gets a fucking a shiv, and he just starts, like, shivin' Schlack in the kidneys. <laughs> <laughs> And then Schlack no sells it, and you're like, "What the fuck?" And he takes off the shirt, and he has phone books taped to, over his kidneys, like an actual yeah. prison. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> let's do the prison. Let's do the phone book spot. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, I popped so big for that man. But <laughs> that's oh. hilarious. 
And then yeah, I don't want to you know go into every single spot, but yeah, just continued with that the 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 shiv or shank. It, do you use yes. a shiv to shank someone? Is that the the specific <laughs> I think details they're, here? It's, as far as I'm aware, they're interchangeable. <laughs> it's one or the other, right? Because I heard a thing where a, was it a shiv can be made out of anything, whereas a shank is more specific. I don't know. <laughs> We'll we'll this follow is, this up with future research, I, folks. Yeah, there's knowledge that we definitely need to make sure that the the listening audience is totally clear on, in case yeah. you don't want to be in prison and ask for the wrong things. Like, oh, I fucking asked, I wanted a shiv. Well, you said shank, motherfucker. That I got. This is a shank. Yeah, I mean, I don't. You I don't feel so make, foolish. I don't want to make assumptions on our our listenership here. We we may have. That's some. how a guy gets raped in prison. Too. <laughs> you you ask for the wrong weapon, you get raped. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, we, we may have listeners uh, on the inside, and I don't want to offend them in any way. I don't want them Holy to... Holy crap. If anybody listens to our show that's in prison, <laughs> that <laughs> please email us, Carrier Pigeon, and write us. <laughs> please. We, we want to be pen pals with you. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be so happy about that. But uh, <laughs> this match, <laughs> holy shit. Craziness, all of the Nick Gage shit that you love. Uh, I think Nick Gage maybe had something to, to make up for. Um, from the, the prior night's performance against Scott Steiner, and so he was just fucking crazy extra motivated, and yeah, this this was a fucking scene, man. Um, and yeah, definitely lived up to the prison death match moniker. And, you know, there's an appeal of Nick Gage in GCW that's like, there's nothing else like it, you know? It's like Sandman in ECW at his, at his fucking peak, dude. Like, when Gage comes out, and he has fucking Dewey is like the I don't even know what Dewey is, but he's he's amazing for what he brings to it. Um, and yeah, then Nick Gage comes out and he's fucking like just going head to head with the fans and they're firing him up and everyone's like jumping up and down and doing the MDK chants and shit. And I love Nick Gage. He's yeah, the man. Dude, honestly, definitely not my style of wrestler, but just a fucking mystique about this guy. Like, he just has a presence. He Even when he's real, just kicking man. it on Bourbon Street. Yeah, he's like a real guy, but he comes off as like, that's a bad motherfucker. That <laughs> yeah. You don't want to mess with that motherfucker. Yeah. I'm hoping uh, uh, hoping we get to uh, touch base with him again in uh, in New York coming up over Mania Week. And it was fucking delightful to meet him last year in New Orleans. Lovely. Yeah, you can actually have a chat with the Deathmatch King. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nice chance. See so, ya. Yeah, fantastic match, and then we move on to the main event: the Crazy Monkey Jun Kasai uh, meeting uh, Alex Colon. Uh, and Alex Colon's another sort of Deathmatch guy who I haven't seen that much of him outside of that death, Deathmatch kind of um, context. Uh, but but yeah, he, you can definitely tell that he can um, he can do a bit more than. I don't want to bury a guy, but perhaps a little bit more than a Marcus Crane, you know? Mm. Uh, but, yeah, so this uh, was actually really fun. Um, people were just, like, next level invested in Jun Kasai. It's almost like Jun Kasai getting, like, a like an Undertaker kind of reaction type of thing or, like, just the fans are like, holy shit, we're getting to see Jun Kasai. Um, so yeah, they were like chanting for him and like doing the, this is awesome chant when they were just like doing the ring introductions and looking across at the, the ring of one another. So um, the atmosphere of this was, was fucking nuts. Uh, yeah, they did so much light tube shit and yeah, really fun. Like Jun Kasai, like I was saying before, you can just tell this guy has the psychology of the death match down, you know, people can do their, their different match structures and that, uh, with all sorts of wrestling in the, the wrestling world, but Jun Kasai knows how this deathmatch shit works. This yeah, a lot awesome. of it, uh, honestly, sometimes when you're watching it, it just comes to grab that thing, hit him with that thing, grab that thing, hit him with that thing, and it, it gets to a point where it's fucking tedious, but if you can actually build a story into it, mm. it definitely gets a lot more appealing. I have a few and far between, I've never seen a deathmatch that got me deeply invested besides just saying, holy fuck, what am I watching? But... You know, I'm I'm, give, I'm keeping an open mind, man. I'm watching a lot more. <laughs> yeah, you're doing it, man. I mean, my favorite death match of all time will probably always be that, uh, that Terry Funk, Onita, uh, exploding cage death match from FMW. I think it was like mm-hmm. '93, 
94, something like that, in uh, Yokohama, the big, big stadium. Like, just the overall, like we're saying, the storytelling of it uh, was just, it can't be topped. But, I mean, these uh, couple of matches uh, on, on this show gave me almost, like, the same feeling. Like, that that G-Raver, Matt Tremont one. Like, there was actually, like, an investment in the dudes. Uh, you know, not quite to the level of Onita and, you know, Terry fucking Funk. Uh, but, but yeah, it's like... I. I'm not a you know full on deathmatch guy, but I, I can see why people dig it, you know. Yep, full show. Mm-hmm. So that was our show. Really fun. Uh, highly recommend it. And yeah, just just start to finish. Fun and just a, a wild ass experience. I heard people saying this was like uh, from you know people who watch every single GCW show there's ever been, saying this was like top to bottom the best GCW card there's ever been. Wow, so strong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So high praise indeed. Yeah, recommend. honestly, I every every show I watch of theirs, so I've never been disappointed, even when it's involving like the crazy shit that we've described. Uh, the PCO and Joey Janela match is one of the funnest matches I've seen in my life. So, yeah, mm-hmm. they always put on a great show. So good. Oh, also props to the commentary. Uh, drunk Joey Janela is becoming one of Again. my favorite things on commentary. <laughs> While Joey is out with his fucked up, jacked up <laughs> knee, he's uh, still keeping his, his presence felt on these shows uh, with his, his drunken uh, contributions on the in the commentary booth. So I'm loving that. Uh, I was also a big, uh, real happy to, to hear the, the lovely vocals of um, of Danny Havoc back. I, I really like Danny Havoc, and uh, he, he just brings something else, you know, like we're saying in the past, that, that sort of deadpan, uh, just, you know, appreciation of, of what's going on in the ring. Like, yes, these two men are severely fucking one another up with shards of light tubes right now. Yep, that's what's going on. <laughs> and they're doing it so well. Yeah, and the other thing I love about GCW is their complete lack of... Uh, lack of, I want to say lack of appreciation, but just they do not think their fans are good people. There was a moment during this this card where they were saying, you know, any other show and wrestlers are brawling into this crowd and recklessly throwing fans into, into or, you know, wrestlers into fans, you know, that, that wouldn't be stood for. You know, there'd be other shows where you'd have, uh, you know, the, the promotion say, hey, you can't do that. Uh, don't be doing that. But here, you know, we, we see our fans for what they are. They're cunts. <laughs> Danny Havoc actually referred to the fans of GCW as cunts on commentary, which I was quite tickled by. Yeah, man. People in this day and age, they'll take that with a badge of honor. Like, ah, oh, he called me a cunt. That's that's <laughs> fucking great. Especially those kind of guys. Oh, best part of the show, and top of everything mm. else. Uh, so in the main event, after the main event, that like a thing where all the good dudes came out and had a nice little sort of moment to see where all of the where they've come from to the this moment and then they announced two shows coming up in japan which is going to be huge um but yeah schlack's in there and he's just like giving the two dudes in the main event beers and he's just like chugging a beer while he's like still got fucking all sorts of shit in his in his you know skin light tubes and everything and he just yeah. like i think it's like a budweiser that he had like one of his you know bottles and he just like <laughs> carelessly <laughs> throws the budweiser up after he's finished it over his head out of the ring, and then you see on the, the you know, in front of the camera, <laughs> it just fucking hits this fan in the head. <laughs> <laughs> and to start with, we were concerned because we thought from behind it almost looked like um, like it was one of the uh, fan's girlfriends or something like that. Like, oh, fuck, he hit the girlfriend. <laughs> She it gets was, color. She it, was, like, ah. oh, it was just a, a, a smaller dude. But yeah, he then turned around, like, what happened? And then he's like, you could see him turn to his buddy and just be like, they just got hit with a fucking beer bottle. And then he like high fives his buddy. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Schlack hit me in the head with a beer bottle. Fucking yeah. living, living your best life, buddy. One of my favorite wrestling moments ever was when Kevin Kevin Owens or Kevin Cena at the time told me to suck Adam Cole's dick in the middle of a match at PWG. It was like, well, that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I sold it like a champ, too. Beautiful. You have to sell it. But you yeah, have to sell it. Yeah, you can't act like a shithead. Otherwise, they're like, oh, that guy's, that guy's no fun whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. Give him that pop. 
<laughs> nice. So that was that was the show. Um, you want to? Uh, so the freelance show was actually one that I, I watched live on a whim as well. Uh, that was yeah, from was a, a, a couple of weeks back, I think, um, in the, the Logan Square Auditorium, uh, which is kind of like their, their new home now that they're out of the the bottom lounge and their the previous uh, beautiful home at the the Abbey Pub that got burnt down, as we discussed on our uh, our show with Nick there. Uh, but yeah, this this show was was actually real fun, top to bottom. Um, I, I know your boy uh, was in the opener match, representing three two one battle. Yep, yep, Daniel Maccabe. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, fucking two, he was on two shows that I watched this weekend. I may have specifically watched them for Daniel, of course. But dude, uh, I guess there was a real interesting story with the six combatants in the first match. Like I didn't realize that they were all so close, considering how. Some of them have been wrestling a little bit longer than others, but uh, mm. yeah, all f- I guess all six members are part of a documentary and wanted the opportunity to wrestle together for the first time. I guess when you're six guys, it's hard to get that happening for the first time, so they managed to pull that off. Mm. Yeah, well, I, I actually uh, missed this match, unfortunately. Um, oh, you bastard. I, I started watching. I remembered the show was on you know, a little bit of a ways in, and I was like, oh, fuck. And then I, I tuned in uh, right during the second match. But yeah, these these kind of like multi-man scramble affairs are kind of like what um, what freelance does best, you know. It's just going to be a whole bunch of crazy ass spots, and it's going to be fun as shit. So I'm assuming that's what happened here. Yes, indeed, it was lots of fun, lots of cool spots. Um, Alex Zane, another guy who wrestles up here pretty frequently, was also in the match. It was cool to see him. And uh, the champ, Craig Mitchell, won out overall. But Craig it was one He's of the guys good. that came over. Dude, yeah, he impressed the shit out of me because they had him over a 3-2-1 a couple times. And he, yeah, real good. And especially when you when you follow guys on social media and you, they show their progression of what they were when they first started out and how quickly they've changed their like, body and personality. Like he's putting the work, man. Craig's mm-hmm. fucking awesome. Yeah. I mean, Nick said like on the, the show where we interviewed him about um, how, how Craig was, was one of those early dudes, like one of the guys that he came up with um, from the, the days of the, the backyard wrestling stuff. Um, so probably him uh, along with uh, Nick and, and Castro are probably like some of the most, OG freelance guys there are, um, but yeah, I always get a big kick out of uh, out of watching Craig Mitchell. He had a, a really good match on a, a show I watched um, from uh, last year against PCO on one of the one of the freelance shows, which I, I highly recommend. That was really fun. Fuck yeah! yeah. Uh, Sleepless in Chicago was also the name of the show. I wanted to call attention to that because I thought that was it's quite clever. Eh. I like the original title better a little bit. I like the original title better. I like Sleepers in Seattle. I mean, it's just maybe I'm more partial to that. I don't know. Has Defy or um, has Defy done a show called Sleepers in Seattle yet? Uh, they I think they've done something like maybe Sleeper in Seattle or something like that. You know, okay. they always got to make it wrestling. All right, all right, all yeah. right, dude. Uh, the show also is cool. But like. I haven't watched a lot of freelance. I just like seen one match or here or there. Uh, so I didn't even know like Darren Corbin's group, the take it home records. Holy oh, crap. That's, man. I think that's... their match was my favorite on the whole card. Actually. The that take was it good home shit. Records. Cause I've, I've been a big fan of Darren Corbin for you know a while, ever since I saw him in Shikara and, and things like that. Um, he works up uh, for a lot of the, like Eric Cannon's kind of groups up in Minnesota. I think he's from there. Um, but yeah, uh, Darren Corbin, Bucky Collins, and Mickey Finnegan, uh, the take it home records and Bucky Collins actually was probably the, the guy that I didn't know beforehand that really surprised the shit out of me. I thought he was great. Hell yeah. Agreed. hundred percent. Really fun. Like great. His, uh, got this sweet mustache and like crazy, like, uh, like cow print hair. Afro hair. Yeah. All, all around <laughs> good looking too. And they were against uh, Eric Cannon and the N Words, A Jizzle and B Rice. And uh, the N Words have been a, like a, a really uh, great like sort of home team for um, freelance for quite a while. And that first ever show that I went to, uh, they were there working. I think they were actually meant to be booked against Skyder and um, his his tag team partner, um, whose name is escaping me. But then the match got changed or something. It was uh, it was real fun. 
Um, Their parody of the NWO logo is one of the most brilliant things I've ever seen. Honestly, like them changing that into the N words from NWO. It's like when they thought of that, they must have been, well, we're fucking brilliant. This is a T-shirt. This is everything. This is fucking great. I there's so many you only parody something so many times where it's worn out. But that's like perfect. Yeah. Yeah. There's like a license to print money right there. with That merch. Smart. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they really bring their own. Um, they're always a real fun part of the show. So I, I very much appreciate that. But this match was just like the perfect six man tag, in my opinion. I can't dis I can't disagree. I had a lot of fun, especially like I said, I haven't seen a ton of Darren Corbin's work and he is hilarious. What a great heel, what a dickhead. Mm, such a dickhead. And he gets like that real, you know, heat from the crowd. Like they just really fucking hate Darren Corbin. Yep. Just not, don't like him. Straight up. And then we <laughs> had uh, Eye Candy Elliot against Sonny Kiss. Now, is it Sonny Kiss, the dude that was just signed by AEW? Yeah, indeed. Yeah, and he was in the last season of uh, Lucha Underground, right? That's true, and he also, he used to work for my buddy Dennis Long's uh, Tier 1 when it was still around in New York. Right. Yeah, so this was, <coughs> this was pretty fun. <laughs> Dude, he's awesome. He's like incredibly talented. He's got his character down. He's like a uh, hell of an athlete. Like, there's can't talk shit. Like, all the there was actually a bunch of controversy. Like, a bunch of people on the internet saying, oh, they're hiring gay and transgender people just to make waves in the news and kind of devalues the progress of these people in general. Like, you even it's insinuating that does them a disservice. in in general. So it's lame because honestly, as you've seen in his wrestling, he's, the dude's talented. Like, fucking no need to hate. Yeah, and I mean, he's he's doing like, basically the Exotico gimmick from um, yeah. Mexico. It was like, it's been a, a thing forever and he does like a, a much better job of it than like most of the guys in AAA that I see doing that that are not like, you know, Cassandro or um, who was the one in Lucha Underground? His name? Uh, oh man, really good. Oh, it's totally escaping me right now. Hang on, I'm gonna look this up. Sean Underground Zodico Pimpinella Escalada. Yeah, Pimpy. Pimpy. Everyone loves Pimpy. Yes. But yeah, outside of those two, I feel like uh, like this dude is just fucking really killing it in in terms of doing that gimmick and, and doing it well. Um, yeah, I mean that that whole thing that like controversy was like when those signings came out with the AEW press conference. Um, you know, when you look at it just from a removed perspective, and most of the people don't know who these these dudes are, and they're just like, oh look, they're signing gay people to be like you know trendy or whatever or like transgender or whatever. But the, the thing is, if they're good wrestlers, then shut the fuck up. You know, like yep. especially the um, the transgender woman um, who's done a, a whole bunch of stuff in Japan. Like from what I've heard, like she's actually really good, like a, a undiscovered kind of like, um, like that, that real kind of Joshi monster kind of character. Oh, badass. Yeah. So I'm I'm looking yeah, Nyla, forward to seeing what she can bring. I've actually interacted with Nyla on Nyla Rose on Twitter for a long time, and I because she's not part of her character, she doesn't like broadcast. I had no idea that she was transgender. I just thought she was a badass female wrestler. So yeah, I learned I learned something, and I learned well. You can't really it doesn't really fucking matter if they're a good performer. That's all that fucking matters. Exactly. And people were talking shit. I saw one thing like, oh, that uh, they posted. A picture of a match that Nyla Rose is going to be in, and some idiots go, "Oh, so we're already having intergender matches." I I love the idea that people are, are like you know making a big deal of the controversy of uh you know a, a not not a, a female born wrestler versus another female. Like, oh my gosh. It's fucking work, guys. <laughs> yeah, get <laughs> over it. I mean. It, you know, I think there is some sort of a bit of merit to people that will argue, like, you know, the idea of, of transgender, uh, you know, equality in the world of mixed martial arts. You know, like, I, I think there's a, you know, reasons why people could make the argument that, uh, you know, uh, 
females that are maybe not born as females shouldn't be fighting, you know, born females in uh, a mixed martial arts octagon. But in pro wrestling, fuck me. Come on. Where were you getting yeah. off, like, having a problem with that? Jeez. That's like, like saying, well, shouldn't you be mad that the big show was fighting Floyd Mayweather then? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's literally a giant fighting a little tiny man. Like, it's, come on, get over yourselves. It's not anything different. It's just wrestling. Yeah. And yeah, it, the proof to... is really going to be in the pudding when we actually watch the show, right? When double or nothing happens. And if, uh, if, if this Nyla Rose chick as a as a, a good worker and, and actually a good wrestler and brings a, a whole bunch to the table, fucking full stop right there. Done. What yep. arguments to be had? She's a good wrestler. She's a good wrestler. Fuck off. You know, if, if it turns out she's not a throat, good wrestler. No. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Whatever. Don't, don't uh, incite the trolls, they say. Yeah, I'm pretty much done speaking. I, I talked about it for a while on Twitter and the one girl who was talking shit about it, like, got pissed off because I shared some of her tweets because it sounded fucking really fucked up and some video surfaced of her using the the F word as a homophobic slur uh, towards Seamus during a, a, a like a Royal Rumble video and then she edited it and then apparently people were giving her death threats she asked me to, she direct message me please stop carrying on about this so yeah, I guess the internet is a powerful thing, and uh, people will run their mouths and get people all riled up and hate when people respond. But, dude, why do people take shit so seriously? It's fucking wrestling. Mm. I mean, I often will be the one where people make that argument. I'll be like, but there still should be you know, some sort of sense of legitimacy to the, the wrestling. I'm all, all a fan of that. But, you know, at the same time, I love me some crazy bullshit, and the independent wrestling world is such a, a place for all of that magical, crazy bullshit to where it's like, why would you take the fun out of it, you know? I don't know. Now, let's not equate transgender wrestlers to crazy bullshit, friend. Well, no. No. I wouldn't Chris? say that. Oh. oh good, good. Making sure. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm more referring to a, a sunny kiss as, as crazy bullshit. I, I don't think yes. that he would in any way question that what he does is beautifully crazy bullshit. It's Gaga. It's the fun stuff in wrestling. Mm, exactly. Uh, but yeah, dude, and then going back to the show, I a lot of the shows we've been watching, or I watched recently, have had a lot of the same performers making their rounds on these different cards. Mm -hmm. And one guy who I've seen quite a bit recently is one Jake Parnell, who is fucking awesome. What do you think about Jake Parnell? I actually... Cannot Not remember this match whatsoever. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> We've watched a bit of wrestling since then, so I'm sorry, but this match is just fucking just blanked from my memory. I don't know why. No, I mean I, <laughs> sorry. I was working on art, so I can't really say any spots. But I've a match uh, with Jake and um, Kobe Durst at Kobe Black Durst, Label Pro. Ari Azteca awesome. and uh, Gary J were in this match apparently. Yeah. Completely yeah, yeah. Me. I don't know. I think there was some craziness. I think there was some crazy spots where I was worried about someone dying. I think I barely remember that, maybe. Anyway. Hey, Chris, hmm? are we having technical issues? Because I, uh, I felt like I cut out for a second. Are you, can you uh, hear me fine? I'm, I'm hearing you beautifully, sir. All right, just making sure. Hmm. But yeah, uh, it, it was a fine enough match and all good performers. I've just been really impressed with Jake Parnell uh, with the last couple of shows because, he, like I said, he was on the Black Label pro show with Kobe Durst. Um, do you remember much of Kobe Durst at all? No. <laughs> <laughs> all right, move on. Friggin' the insight. Friggin' the insight right here. Yeah. Uh, I did remember yeah. the next match, Rob Anthony against Tyler Bateman, because I'm actually a big fan of both of those dudes. Um, I've, I've become a big fan of Tyler Bateman and his recent PWG work. He's, uh, out of that sort of group of, of new kind of local... Uh, California guys that debuted in the last year in PWG. I feel like Tyler Bateman and Brody King were like the two real standouts. And they actually have a sweet tag team that uh, they, they work together as well. Um, but yeah, I thought this was a real fun, like hard hitting match. Rob Anthony's been, you know, Ego Anthony's been a, a guy that I've liked, uh, you know, since I started watching freelance wrestling. Um, just so good, so solid. 
Um, yeah, I, I enjoyed this quite a lot. That's the last match of the show that I actually watched. It was. Uh, you didn't done watch with the main the event. I, I did not. Oh, I did not. Boy, because I the, the no. main event was was quite uh, earth shattering in in some circles. Uh, it was the longtime freelance uh, champion Isaiah Velasquez, uh, the, the ace of uh, freelance. A lot of people say um, against yeah. Kylie yeah. Ray. And Kylie Ray has been a real sensation. The, show, in... the entire the entire show they built this matchup. Yep, they sure did. And and Kylie Ray had like a big time. I just time think it's funny. Feud. I totally bailed on it, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh well. You, I missed the first match. You missed the last match. But we we make it up together, right? All right. But yeah, I enjoyed this match a whole bunch. Uh, Kylie Ray's uh, been one of the real standouts of like just working guys. Like I, I don't think I've ever actually seen her work a woman. Um, but she's just amazing in these these matches with dudes, very much like um, Candice LeRae. You know, um, I think that's something that a lot of people missed uh, in, uh, in in the world of wrestling. It's interesting to see WWE maybe dipping their toe in the water of this uh, intergender wrestling. But I thought this was a fantastic example of it in this match, um, in terms of like working it in a way to where the guy doesn't look like he's just oh and here's the bit where i pretend self with a woman kind of thing like they actually do it in a, a way that, that makes sense um and it has some credibility to it and it it's gets... a hard balance to get either where it's looking like he's just guys just pummeling and beating the crap out of her and where it's like okay i can't really watch this too gotta make it believable like you're saying like you can't just be a fucking like comedic selling for this weak offense mm. Yeah, but I thought they made it look great. You know, you can tell everything Isaiah Velasquez does. He's a fucking really good worker. Um, and, yeah, he they, they had the credibility of it. And everyone just in, in freelance has this, like, crazy love for Kylie Ray. Um, she she comes out to the, the, the Pokemon movie theme music, which is a, a great start, I think. Uh, she's almost yeah. got that, that same magic. Uh, that um, what's her name in NXT and WWE used to have before everyone hated her, Bailey. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, like a really happy-go-lucky kind of attitude. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, I, I thought this was awesome, and, and she has like such a fire in her comebacks to where it's like just really, really cool. And then she she conquered it. She did the impossible, and in the end, she got the upset and uh, won the freelance wrestling world championship crazy that's fucking cool and I, I like when they kind of pull that shit off from an actual like open challenge type scenario like somebody comes out actually answers the open challenge of the cocky champion and loses like that's great storytelling it's that's all that's always gonna work hmm. yeah yeah 100 percent. so yeah i uh, i had a lot of fun on this show and it had a really great ending with that that main event i thought it was great um, and then we move on to, what do you got to tell me about this Black Label show, sir? Um, well, I, I, it was a whole hell of a heap of fun, dude, because... I mean, we don't they, have to go match by match, but kind of just... No, you know, no worries, I was going to go over a couple details. Yeah, what yeah. do we got? Uh, so yeah, the first match of the show was Daniel Mukabe and Rory Gulak. Fucking awesome match. Uh, Gulak's underrated. Well, the the brother the, of um of the other Gulag, true Gulag, true Gulag. <laughs> yeah, catch point, <laughs> catch point zone. But yeah, a lot of cool grappling stuff. Uh, Drew trying, or excuse me, Rory trying to get under Daniel's skin to get him fucking out of his game. But it was awesome. Uh, fans were really into it. It was it was longer than I expected it to be, especially with the opening match of a card. Uh, but yeah, it was. Really awesome, a lot of cool moves, and ended up with, with uh, Rory winning, unfortunately. But honestly, I liked it, and it was funny because uh, Sarah Shockey was on announcing with Prazak, and uh, she kept on fucking a cup, fucking up and calling Daniel Macabe McCabe. <laughs> <laughs> and as someone who's like a fan, me and my girlfriend are watching, like, oh yeah, keep fucking up his name, like, no, it's Macabe, damn it. But honestly. They were, I guess, they for this show were bringing in a lot of new talent guys that had yeah, been. Yeah, so. I think that was the story of this show. I heard going into it that it was one where you know a lot of the big names have been signed up or, or whatever, or just weren't available for this particular show. So it was using a lot of new faces. So it was kind of a real proving ground show of sorts. 
Yeah, yeah. so we had uh, AJ Gray, buddy that we talked about earlier, and then Logan James. That was a cool match. Um, one match I liked was an intergender one with Chris Statlander, who like does this gimmick where she's like an alien, but it was a a cool intergender match where again he didn't look super over dominant and she didn't act need to act super goofy on the offense to or he looks like an idiot selling for that bullshit um that but, being said it, with like the the idea of the heat like you're right yeah. it's a weird um a weird meeting point but sometimes like that um that human tornado match with penelope like human tornado was a real dick and he was just beating her up and he was being a real dick and, and some people I heard uh, online had a real problem with how much of a dick he was being. But to me, in that context, it was perfect because it got like so much heat for Penelope when she made that comeback. It wasn't like people were just like, oh, I'm out of this match. Like they were fucking there for it. Yeah, they were ready to see him get his fucking ass kicked. <laughs> yeah, so I think you can do like that over the top heat to, a, you know, to a point. Uh, but, but yeah, so. It, I don't think you have to necessarily shy away from it too well, much. Well, it has to be a, ba- a baby face that fans are behind. Like, yeah. a, Pen- a Penelope is perfect. It's like everyone who goes to GCA which is, like, loves, this ki- loves this girl. Yeah, I mean, She's same like, thing, like, in um, Beyond Wrestling. Ladies, Gr- so it's all, you're invested. Yeah, 100%. Uh, I mean, Beyond, in Beyond Wrestling, they had a huge feud between Chris Dickinson and uh, Princess Kimberly a few years back that involved a, a you know, gift that kind of went viral of... Um, Dickinson just like fucking turfing her like awesome bomb through this uh, this table, and just like not protecting her whatsoever. But I'm almost sure she told him to you know do it as hard as he could. And he has no problem doing so. And yeah, <laughs> a lot of people got so fucking angry at Dickinson for that. Like, and to the point where he still doesn't get bookings in certain places because people have that like real vitriolic hate for him. And yeah, they had like some matches, and like I think on uh, American Rana was where it got blown off on like the biggest show of the year, and that was like the main event. And yeah, you could tell like he fucking didn't hold back whatsoever to the point where it was like a bit uneasy, but overall it kind of like that was a story that needed to be told for that match. Everyone's sitting there uncomfortable looking at the guy next to him, like, should we step in? <laughs> uh... Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> but then she hits her comeback and like just fights back and is just such a fucking boss bitch and yeah it's like awesome so you, you well, can I'll go do through right. another fucking couple things here uh before we move on to the main event yeah what uh, else we got also impressed by alley cat she's fucking awesome in this match against savannah stone so, um I was, there's a six man with some guys from Chikara. I don't know if you ever heard of this guy, but this is one of my favorite wrestling names ever. Uh, Still Life with Apricots and Pears. <laughs> I've not heard of that, but that's tremendous. <laughs> that's, that's the wrestling name. And he's a mask. He's got these different paint swaths all across him. He's got like, it looks like an abstract painting, but yeah, it's a still life of apricot and pears. And they kept on <laughs> saying it over and over. Like it's... Every time they refer to his name, that they say the whole thing, right? <laughs> yeah, so good. <laughs> uh, a name I love, Sad Comp. Like <laughs> they were great. Uh, I always I like the work horsemen. Uh, James Drake and Anthony. Yeah. Those guys are fucking awesome together. Yeah, man, they've been a, a real great part of um, freelance wrestling. I believe they've they've been really good over there. They they won me over first time I saw them actually. Like just real fucking. I hadn't seen them much before, but they're just like exactly what their name says. They just go out yep. there and fucking own it. Uh, then they had a scramble match where Danny Adams came out and challenged everyone who came to the seminar early in the day. So uh, it was a mixture, like a real ragtag group, uh, including the Iron CPA, Graham Bell, uh, which is Graham Bell is this guy who has comes out with a gigantic bazooka, dude. He has a fucking bazooka on his shoulder. Nice. He uh, busts out a couple times. And then there was a guy named Sean Kemp who up here locally, uh, Sean Kemp's famous basketball player. But this kid was a character whose his gimmick is he's a dog and he's been neutered. So anytime anybody went to kick him in the balls, he didn't react. He didn't, he no sold because he had no balls. He literally in the mess says, I've been neutered. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking ridiculous. But yeah, overall, the, there's a lot of fun with that fucking scramble match. And another awesome match with Tyler Bateman. And nice. the last match of the show, I stayed for this one. 
reason why I was talking about Parnell is he had a fucking great match and won the title off of Kobe Durst uh, at the main event of this show. Mm. So uh, maybe check it out if you'd like, at least for fucking a still life of apricots and pears. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Love it. Uh, all right. Now uh, we move on to the, the main event of the show. Which the is coup de that, gras. Yeah, the, the ICW party and bullshit show uh, that we, we started talking about at the start of the show, and now we're closing yes. it off at the end. Look at this full circle right here. We know well, what before we're doing. we get into it, I want a question. I have a question for you, because it's just oh. more aesthetic things uh, in wrestling. This Mr. Uh, Luke Perry's son, Jungle Boy. Do you think Jungle Boy is a name that once you're established as a wrestler, you should continue with? Like, should he be Jungle Boy on the yep. card? 100%. You think so? Yep. Oh, man. No doubt about it. To me, it's similar to, um, like, it your, your more me Mexican old school kind wrestling of gimmicks. Fact. I don't hate it. Like, okay. your, your gimmicks that you'd have in, like, a CMLL or things like that. Um, you know, like, I remember there was a Tarzan Boy in uh, CMLL, uh, and that was just all he was. He was Tarzan Boy. Um, you know, at one point, like, does, does Jungle Boy become a man when he gets, you know, Jungle. let's say 10 years down the road, is he no longer a boy and he becomes Jungle Man? I'm not sure. But for now, <laughs> I think Jungle Boy doesn't have to be like, you know, in in, uh, in inverted commas, Jungle Boy, such and such, you know, is his whatever name. I, I just like that he's just simple. He is Jungle Boy. That's it. Oh, and, and people hear I the name and then they, they watch him and they're like, yeah. He's a fucking, fucking jungle, boy. jungle boy. Damn right he is. Yeah. I also have respect that he's working just on this jungle boy name and he's not working off of his dad's name. You know, that would oh, have yeah. been the, the, the thing to do. You know, people are like, oh, wow, we want to book Luke Perry's son. Yeah, uh, no, but Luke no, Perry's son's his own artist thing. probably known as Jungle Boy. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I love him. I think he's great. Yeah, he is dope. So you, you, are you the same opinion or are you thinking jungle boy is just not working well i would just well, i always ponder things no i think it works because i think it's like classic old school wrestling like a guy doesn't have to be anything but he's, he's fucking he's jungle boy i mean that's yeah all it needs to be if somebody says jungle boy while it does sound nondescript at a point you'll just know who the fuck we're talking about that's fucking jungle boy i'm hoping he's got that that trademarked you know or is there some sort of other jungle boy out there in the world of pop culture to where that may become tricky I don't know. These are the things that All Elite Wrestling is going to have to deal with now that Jungle Boy is, is signed with All Elite. I was so excited to see that. Hey, it's like you don't expect a guy that's kind of just making his name to be signed, but why the fuck not? Who has more potential right now than Jungle Boy? I look forward to their, because uh, if, you know, they'll probably have to give him his own entrance music unless they're going to buy that song from whatever band that is. Oh, 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 oh. oh like, that's timeless. <laughs> They're going to do like a mini version of it, for, like when uh, DDP had a ripoff version of Nirvana. They'll just have some <laughs> sort of AEW version of that song. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, uh, MLW kind of does the same thing. They just do sweet covers of, of, of certain people's music. I know they did the same for uh, when, when Swerve was working there. And you know how much we love fucking Shane Strickland's music. So, yeah. Yeah, I think they can do it. Do a sweet cover right. of it. But yeah, I sweet. love that music. It's beautiful. Um, but yeah, then this show, this was, uh, as we said, in the fucking beautiful uh, shithole of all shitholes, Ultimate Fitness Queens. <laughs> Just really felt like a classic, like, IWA Mid-South fucking Ian Rotten show. Just like house lights, you know, all of just the, the cl it's not one of these cool looking indie buildings, just one of those no. shitty indie buildings. Fluorescent fucking lighting making everything a slight yellow color. <laughs> yep, yep, those fluoro fucking lights. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but uh, yeah, the, the first match that I tuned in and I was like really glad I caught Grim Reefer against Tony Deppin. This was real bloody fun, you know, like. Uh, like I was saying before, I think this was where I was most surprised. Fuck, Grim Reefer is still just as good and innovative, innovative as he, he was, you know, when I saw him back in the day. And, uh, you know, we got a lot of love for Tony Deppin, just like fucking fire, fiery, energetic man, Tony Deppin. He just doesn't, doesn't stop. 
I mean, speaking of amazing um, theme music, we've got to give it up for uh, Tony Depp and uh, what's, what's his actual song? Is it a starship? We built this city? Yeah, yeah, we built this city on rock and roll. Like, fucking oh, dude, best music in the business. Trick. So great. Yeah. I honestly I love this trend of people like getting really quirky songs and getting them over, especially ones that there's a strong chance once you're really over, you're gonna get that sing along action that everybody loves these days. So yeah, good song. Good song. Good song. It just makes me happy every time I hear it. I'm like I can hear like and I think I associate that now with Tony Deppin to I just see him and I'm happy because of the music. It's like one of those <laughs> You know, psychological <laughs> reference things. You know, like yeah. that thing where, like, you're sad and you just smile, and you just the feeling of smiling can make you happy. That's what's happened to me with Tony Deppin. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like our new unofficial mascot. Like, maybe we've the, the gleam of our eye of David Arquette is waning, and we now have Tony Deppin to put our our love and affection on. <laughs> Beep. Beep, 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 and watch, beep, 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 beep. And watch <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, no, I don't think we can we can quit just yet. I That's feel it would be very wrong to do so. Uh, then we had a match uh, where I think I, because I was watching this one live, I made a coffee during the next match, and it was it must not have gone for too long, because so I came back from my coffee and it was over, and the next match was starting. So Yeah, it went quick. Uh, yeah. Maria Manic is fucking insane, but that—that's what I take. That's my takeaway from that. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm and and you know, Penelope Ford is great. I think she's yep. awesome. But I don't know what about happened in this match, but I'm sure it was fun. Uh, then the next match, I was very excited to see of all people, Azriel back. Azriel of Special K and Jersey All Pro fame from back in the day against our boy Jungle Boy. And Dude, I thought this match Azra was fantastic. One of my favorites. I loved me some Special K and early ROH, Deranged, all those guys. Mm -hmm. uh, Izzy, but Dixie. Azrael, yes, indeed. Hydro, later going on to be Jay Lethal. Uh, Slim J, fucking Slim awesome. J. <laughs> <laughs> the list goes on and on. But. Dude, Azrael, I'm not trying to be too hated, but the dude looks like he hasn't seen the sun since those days. Like, he was so pale. Is there his something hair's, I don't his know? His hair's grown out. Like, I think his he's just been... His hair's grown out. He looks scary. He's been locked in a dungeon since those days, and he, he hasn't seen the, the sun. <laughs> the Azrael gimmick. The yeah. evil, demonic-looking motherfucker, because he did, definitely looked creepy as fuck, but... You know, uh, still doing the crazy high spots he always did. His work impressed me more than it ever did back in the day. Because remember, I mean, back in the day, I just kind of thought him, of him as like one of those kind of indie flippy dudes. But he really um, held this together. Like, he's become really a polished worker these days. I guess that'll happen if, I don't know if he like consistently wrestled all that way through or he was just in that basement or what. But yeah. Still rolling going and practicing with everybody even though he's may not working shows that could be the case yeah i don't know but he impressed me a lot and yeah i thought this match with jungle boy was was real fun and jungle boy as we said just continues to get better and better every match i love it and then my favorite match on this entire show came next between the different boy jimmy lloyd and teddy hart <laughs> i love this, this so great. much <laughs> Uh, Jimmy Lloyd coming out wearing some sparkly ass gold shit <laughs> was fucking great. And I, I think it was pretty much just like, you know, the kind of goof on Teddy's ensemble he yeah. typically wears. But yeah, it was fucking hilarious. And drunken Joey Janela on commentary mustn't have got the Teddy Hart reference. And he was just like, what the fuck happened to Jimmy Lloyd? Is he a genie? Is he become yeah, a yeah. genie? <laughs> <laughs> There's two genies in this match. <laughs> I honestly can't say enough good things about Jimmy Lloyd. I was actually talking about that with you offline mm. uh, about how fucking Jimmy Lloyd, you look at him before you see him wrestle and you're like, oh, he's probably just some shithead kid, especially since he works death match. Mm. You just did. You would think there's no reason to enjoy this kid, but he is awesome. Mm -hmm. He's fucking Climbed up the ladder, has busted his ass, and they put him over big uh, from watching the shows. Even Teddy did at the end of the match. So I can't say enough good things about Jimmy Lloyd. I love this little guy. The different boy. Yeah, yeah he is a different boy. From the moment on that um, that New York show where they had the big Tron screen and had the Tron screen of that like video of him, like his mum yelling at him, 
and then him hitting his mum with a light tube in the head and then <laughs> the mum proceeding to kick his ass. <laughs> I was like, I love this guy. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, fantastic. Teddy Hart broke out this like sweet dungeon Stu Hart shooter moves that I fucking loved and he just tied uh, Jimmy up in, in some knots. I thought that was awesome. I hadn't seen that side of Teddy Hart in a little while. Uh, but yeah, overall really fun. And then at the end, we got one of those great, great, beautiful Teddy Hart speeches. And there's there's nothing like it in, in the world. Really. So meaningful. Like he's trying to connect with everyone in the room. He's trying to connect with everyone watching at home. And honestly, I think he succeeds. Like I think so. Is, it's so beautiful, man. It's like the closest thing to that, that Dusty Rhodes promo where he like says about you. He reaches into the the TV screen yeah. and he says, you, you touch my hair. Yeah. <laughs> that is Teddy Hart. <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> yeah. And I also, you mentioned about the, the cat holding Joey's like, who's that girl that's with Teddy? Like, I don't remember her being backstage. When I see with him to hold the cat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got to have someone out with the cat. <laughs> oh, dude. Well, what matches where Joey just went off doing a Joey Styles impression the whole match? Oh, man. I, yeah, he was pretty Joey Styles there for a while. Yeah, he's really funny the ECW shows. He's like, oh, it was in the, the semi-main, the scramble, yeah. where fucking Pinky Sanchez did like a thing with his uh, his valet where she teased getting getting some, uh, oh, some boobies yeah, out. Right. And then they <laughs> like, no, fuck you, fans. And yeah, it's you know, yeah. a bit of a harkening back to ECW again. <laughs> Actually, I like Pinky's uh, his in ring entrance, his the gear he wears. He looks fucking badass. Yeah, I've, I've been a big fan of Pinky Sanchez for a long time since um his uh, sweet gimmick in Evolve and Dragon Gate USA with the uh, Eric Cannon and. Uh, Mr. Fucking, I'm forgetting his name. He's like the top guy in TNA and everywhere right now. Fuck. Um, wow. Yeah. He's like the dude who broke a dude's head face with the baseball bat. Sammy, Sammy Callahan. Callahan. Fuck me. My brain is dead right now. <laughs> Jeez. But yeah, uh, the sweet three-man group of Pinky Chan- Sanchez, Eric Cannon, and uh, and Sammy. Fucking yeah, I'm dead. This is this is gone. Yeah. No good. Jeez. <laughs> Fuck me. Let's let's get to the end of this show. I'm overheating here. Oh, uh, we sk- we skipped one match, which was pretty fucking awesome, and in such a dichotomy of styles. Or these guys are com- complete opposites. Uh, Orange Cassidy and Chris Dickinson. That was fucking mm. great. Yeah, that reminded me a lot of the, the real good uh, match that uh, Cassidy had on the Beyond Wrestling show that I watched a little while back against um, Tracy Williams, where it's like, you know, you have your straight man just there to wrestle, there to, to do the wrestling, takes the wrestling seriously against Orange Cassidy, who was in some ways the complete opposite. Um, and yeah, same story and, and really fun. I, I get a lot very much into Orange Cassidy's gimmick every time. You know, I could see him do the pockets like a million times, but it's always fun. For sure. Yep. And then our main event of uh, <laughs> <laughs> this, the second half of the show, you know, I wanted to make sure I said this here, you know, often we say everything's great, you know, and, and that's okay. A lot of the time everything is great. Like on that GCW show, everything was fucking awesome. Sometimes you have shows where they just, they fall off a fucking cliff. And that's what happened here. <laughs> I feel like that first half of the show was amazing prior to intermission. And then, oh, man, intermission match. We got to see Eddie Guerrero and Loki. Oh, yeah, that was so bizarre and random. Man, I forgot how great I that match that was. Match went down. Oh. Honestly, I had no idea that went down, especially because it was for the uh, Impact title at the time. So, yeah, yeah that was really And that cool. was actually in the, the Elks Lodge, the old Madhouse of Extreme for ECW. Oh, man, that was such a beautiful venue. That's my favorite version. That was one of the best versions of Eddie. Like, I know he personally wasn't in his best, but, like, fucking 
the wrestling was so fucking awesome, like him coming back in ROH and like making a name for himself on the indies again. I actually I enjoyed love- that version more so than what we got when he came back to WWE because this was that I, I looked it up and that was actually his first match um, on the indies after he got uh, you know he lost his contract or whatever. So after yeah. he left WWE, this was his first match back to really just prove fucking who he was. And prior to yeah. that, all he was doing was like you know comedy bullshit with China and stuff. So this was like almost the return of that like awesome wrestler version of Eddie Guerrero like that we saw in ECW back in the day. Or like, late WCW when he yeah. fuck, came back from injury, he was all cut and badass as fuck. Yeah, and he didn't do any of the character stuff, but the actual wrestling, like just hard-nosed fucking awesome competitive wrestling that looks like fucking like snug and, and just fucking real. Like I, I really, really got into this match and like, I thought it was such a privilege to see that version of uh, of Eddie. So that was great. Mm-hmm. And then the match fell off. The show fell off a fucking cliff. <laughs> oh, boy. So the main event, Scott Steiner and Nick fucking Gage. Who would have thought we'd see that in the year 2019? Uh, not me, I'll tell you that much. Whoa. They even said it on commentary. No one ever thought they would see this match. Yeah, sometimes, every once in a while, it's, there's for good reason. <laughs> I mean, again, the spectacle. It was a spectacle. I'm, I'm glad I watched it, but in no way, in no universe, was this a good match. <laughs> I did not have the ending spoiled for me because I didn't. Pay, I wasn't on Twitter when uh, everything was going down, so I got to watch the ending fresh. I'm like, is this actually happening? This is fucking great. <laughs> In the, you know, the worst way ever. Yeah, yeah, so great. Well, I think we're about to get a, a run-in from our closing show music. Here we go. We're getting wrapped up here. It'll go away. <laughs> It'll go away in a little bit. Bad, bad, bad is the word I get the bad, yeah. bad, bad. It's a good song. I like it. I don't hate it. <laughs> Surfing bird. Yeah, yeah. All right, and there it goes. Um, so yeah, so yeah, so these guys fucking <laughs> get to the ring, and you're just like, "What the fuck is going on?" And they start basically just smashing on each other, uh, mm-hmm. and it kind of devolves from there pretty quickly. There was a fun spot where they would Scotty got him in the corner and was just lighting him up with chops, and then Nick went to do like his no sell like fuck that shit and like you know went to chuck nick uh scotty in to to give him some chops and then still a, i don't even know how old scott steiner is but however old he is he is still a fucking <laughs> angry no selling piece of shit <laughs> and he basically <laughs> took one and then like girthed nick off and then like it got all kind of weird and shooty for a little bit oh man fuck yeah. this <laughs> one like table or Scotty got put on actually excuse me a door propped up between a couple chairs and Nick dropped an elbow okay. and Scott was pretty much well that's it <laughs> <laughs> you could see I'm done <laughs> you could see in his eyes that was the moment where he's like I'm not getting paid enough for this fucking bullshit <laughs> <laughs> oh boy yeah this, this... I, honestly I think I think Gage was shocked that Scott go anymore <laughs> like he legitimately i mean looked mad of course but he i think he was truly surprised this is like one of the tough guys of wrestling you know scott steiner well fucking badass but apparently and yeah, now i ain't going through no fucking door <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, they're trying to whip him through the door that was like angled over the guardrail the first yeah. time it just <laughs> did not go very well and then they kind of made up for it but yeah like, all right, let's, let's take it home, boys. <laughs> oh, man. But and then yeah. Nick stands up, just fucking pissed off, like yelling at Scott as Scott walks away. And then it's fucking <laughs> jarred. It, it that, must be so surreal for the people. That's why I saw how truly terrible the building was, is because they panned out and showed the from the ring to where Scott was leaving. It's like, oh, my God, this is the most random ass building they're in. It reminded me of, like of the room in your your gym where they do like the um the the yoga or like the group fitness classes. I'm pretty sure that's exactly what this was. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. But yeah, I 
<laughs> so the, the finish of this, I don't even know what happened for the actual finish, but yeah, it resulted in a Nick Gage is awesome at his show finishing promos. That, that's one of you know almost on the level of a Teddy Hart, to where that was amazing, <laughs> and he's just like, I love oh, you fucking guys. Yeah, I do this for my fucking fans, and I I'll die for you. I, this is all I care about. Uh, this is the real me. Uh. Oh man, it's so great. Um, and yeah, he's he's just kind of like clearly not happy with the performance that he got out of Scott Steiner. Scott's just Make walking away. Noise, you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, like, doesn't he like just flippantly kind of throw a chair at him or something? And continue yeah. to walk away. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I think my favorite part of this match was when a fan said to to Scott Steiner, "Do a fa- do a Frankensteiner," and then Scott said, "You do a fucking Frankenstein." Yeah. <laughs> I think you called him a fat boy too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You have to have the Scott Steiner calling people fat boys. Oh <laughs> man, and I, I don't want people to get this crooked. Like I love me some Scott Steiner. You know, early '90s Scott Steiner. It doesn't get better than watching early 90s Steiner Scott Brothers Scott Steiner matches. has made me more money in the wrestling business than any other wrestler. I love me some Scott Steiner. <laughs> exactly. And then like the the big bad booty daddy in the late 90s WCW. Oh, that match that he had with uh, with Goldberg? Was it like Slamboree or something? That match was fucking amazing. Maybe the best Goldberg dude, match that ever happened. Some of the... Dude, Scott Steiner is one of the gr- truest characters in wrestling, like, and the evolution of this guy coming in to be, start wrestling with Rick, because Rick was, you know, came out first, and then <laughs> the Steiner brothers are just fucking murderers in Japan, and then Scott becomes Big Papa Pump in the NWO and starts bleeding his hair, like, this guy is so interesting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's so interesting. And he runs, like, doesn't he run a Denny's or something? A Shoney's. Shoney's. <laughs> So, yeah, which is kind of similar. Yeah, because I'm I'm not quite across this this side of Americana. So if you could please fill me in, what's what is the difference between a Denny's and a Shoney's? I personally have never been to a Shoney's, but I imagine it's probably a little bit more upscale than a Denny's. A Denny's isn't like trashy, but it's like uh, like a McDonald's of diner food quick made right away like you're gonna get the same thing you're pretty sure your order's gonna be the same each and every time but nothing exceptional okay uh, i imagine show needs probably a little bit better than that but yeah dude nice. if, if you've never watched it this is to everybody listening you have to like look up this uh youtube video which is like scott steiner stories and it's just everybody who has a steiner story oh. and they tell it and one of the best the pd williams is, one has got to yeah, be the fucking PD, best hey PD pumps are the <laughs> best hey p let's go with some food <laughs> where you want to eat scott i don't know <laughs> oh. the, his impression is amazing but yeah definitely seek that out if you haven't seen it so great i love that this show has just turned into us raving about how much that match was a piece of shit but we still love scott steiner <laughs> Because it's true. All things are factual. <laughs> that think... was shit, and Scott is awesome. Yeah, yeah, that is a beautiful like, sentiment. No one else could get away with that shit. No one else could get away with it. <laughs> like, fucking saying, fuck this shit, and want to end the match and walk it away. And we'll still like, well, fuck yeah, Scott Steiner. You do that shit. Exactly. He's Scott Steiner. Especially he does what he you wants. get to go say, he did all that, plus he also told some kid to do a fucking Frankensteiner. Like, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's the best. I'm pretty sure he told a guy's girlfriend to suck his cock as well, because that's what Scott yeah, Steiner he, does. He <laughs> Hell yeah. He's all, all he's concerned about is his freaks and his peaks, Chris. Yeah, yep, yep. And, and isn't that all that really matters in the world anyway? You know? That's one to grow on, yeah. Mm, mm. Everyone mull that over until you, <laughs> you're our next show. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I think we're done. Yes, sir. I think it's I'm done. It's been a long one, but I missed you. I missed yeah. you. Thanks for pr- taking your time dealing with us, friends, and thanks for your patience, Christopher. Oh, thank you. Thank you, uh, friends, also. I, I appreciate you you listening to our bullshit. And it's fun just for us to have a show like this. We haven't had one in a little while. We just talk about some indie shows. We had a great story there about you almost dying on a rooftop. Oh, a bit of Jeremy Sickle. Yeah, yeah, I love it. All right, quality show. I've, I've finished putting us over for today. Um, 
Let's plug away. Yeah. Beep, 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 David Arquette Watch 2019. What do you have for us? I'm reaching. I'm reaching a little bit this week. Alright. I, uh. I. I was scrolling through David Arquette's Instagram earlier today to work out something current for David Arquette Watch because. The last really significant thing is what we talked about last time on that uh, that, that sweet show that he worked uh, against Colt Cabana for Eric Cannon. It's been a little bit yes. quiet on the David Arquette front since then. However, run back into retirement. I I think he's still doing things. Um, I think ah. it's it's uh, probably the um the, the screener season. He seems like he's got a few movies out, so he's probably putting a bit more attention to that. I saw he's in like a, an upcoming mobster type of a uh, true true story film. It seems quite interesting. Uh, mm. However, the thing that uh, really uh, I thought was great was David Arquette got a really awesome tattoo on the back of his shoulder of Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's newsworthy enough to, to count as David Arquette watch for this week. Watch his body. Yeah. I like Pee Wee Herman. I think Pee Wee Herman's great. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he's like the... the um, sexual deviant that a lot of people make him out to be, you know, he's just jerking it in a theatre. What's wrong with that? I think it was yeah. a porn you cinema. You what people do in porn theatres? They masturbate. That's, yeah. that's what happens. He just happens to get caught. Yeah, exactly. And uh, how good is Pee Wee's Playhouse? One of the Fucking greatest... Fantastic. Oh, beautiful. Terry the Pterodactyl? I mean, come on, you can't get better than that. Oh, I'm, I'm sure you... Anyway, I don't want this to rave on too much about Pee Wee Herman, but... No, that was... go on. Who's your favorite character? <laughs> Jumpy? <laughs> mecha lecha hi, mecha hi me ho. Bitch. <laughs> so great. All right. To I me, it's like the, the ultimate show to where you're just watching it while stoned. You just notice something different each time. It's just amazing. And the movies. The Pee Wee Herman movies. Oh, don't get me started about that. So I'm great. A fan. Everyone needs to go back and, and give those those a, a little watch. It's just beautiful, beautiful stuff. Little watch ski. Little watch ski. Little watch ski. That's that's my plug for this week. I'm just putting over everyone watching. Um, check out some Pee Wee Herman. That's it. That's it okay, before me. I plug myself, then what I'm plugging that's not me is this new. Uh, if you haven't listened to it yet, Denzel Curry's cover of Bulls oh, on Parade shit. by Rage Against the Machine. Yep. It is the dopest shit ever. It's better than the original song. I don't mind saying that. Well, oh, be cool. Fucking incredible. Yeah, yeah, man. That was so great. I, that's funny because actually that's a, a local radio program that we have in these parts in Australia called Triple J. And every Friday we have a popular musician. Uh, it's, it's called Like a Version. So a fun little play on words there where they, like they do a, a cover of something you, you might not have heard before. There was actually a really great one with Childish Gambino uh, a little while back where he covered Otis Redding. And I love both of those dudes so fucking much. So this was just like two beautiful worlds colliding. Everyone check that one out too. But yeah, this one was uh, yeah Denzel Curry covering um, Bulls on Parade with uh, Rage oh. Against the Machine. And it was so fucking perfect, hey? Dude, I, I love that song, the original song, so much. And then on the bridge, when he threw his own verse in, I was like, mm. yes, I love And with music videos, a lot of times, I don't listen to the whole thing, especially if it's a cover. I'm like, well, I know where this is going to go. I stayed for every fucking note. It I was so good. I think I watched good. it like five times over. It was yeah, really dude. good. Yes. Everyone so give awesome. that a Google. And, uh, of course, you know, in terms of bringing it back to the wrestling, Bulls on Parade, theme music for the Havana Pitbulls. Not forget bow, that. Bow, 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 bow. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah, Rocky so Romero good. and Ricky Ray is going to come out and fuck you up. That's what I think I when I hear guys. that song. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I, I also uh, All right. plug put over the social suicide. Yeah. Um, well, before that, I'll put over myself. 
So everyone check me out oh, at the, like the Chris that. Things and uh, also at Chris Things on the Instagram. I had a sweet uh, Rockers tribute art that I put up this past week that I was, I was pretty happy with. Love me some Marty Janetti, and so that was, and you're that was quite fun to now, do. Right? Yeah, yeah. So if anyone wants you wants a, a Pritsky, I uh, I do those for for quite affordable prices, and and send them across the fucking ocean to y'all, because because that's that's what I do. And uh, I've had quite a few people take me up on that lately, and then I find myself every week going to the post office and sending off some Prinskys. So if you'd like to be part of that magic, uh, jump on the Instagram, find something that you you like that I've done, and uh, send me a little a little message, and uh, you too can have a, a tasteful print. Twelve dollars for an A5, and uh, twenty bones for uh, an A4. Or, you know, if you want to go whatever size, let me know. We'll, we'll, we'll work it out, too. We'll make that I magic happen. I want a two-by-two. Two. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like two meters or two inches? Two inches by two inches. Oh. You know, just small, but it came into my wallet. Damn. I like it. I like it. Be like uh, one of those um, passport photos type of deals, right? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, sweet, sweet. So, yeah, everyone, everyone jump on that. Um, and then in terms of the, the social suplex, I want to actually get our plugs out this time. On the other show, I, I completely forgot it and felt really bad. But uh, everyone, uh, make sure you check out the social suplex. They are the podcast network that we are part of. We're, we're proud to, to be representing the social suplex. Uh, also, in addition to this lovely show, you can find One Nation Radio, Ricky and Clive Wrestling Show. They've got a new All Elite wrestling show on there as well that sounds like it's doing quite well as well as keeping it strong style uh with other jeremy and the young boy josh smith friend of the show mm-hmm. all of that you can find at the the home site of social suplex.com all right and i am at james vanderbeek j a i m s vanderbeek on twitter and instagram uh, if you need a shirt design, get after me. I uh, just finished one up for Living Legend L.A. Park, which I'm so pretty excited for everyone to see. Uh, mm-hmm. I got a, awesome. a little sneak peek, and I think it is fantastic. I would wear the shit Take out of that out. shirt, sir. Yeah, 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 I think I might actually pick one up for my seal ski. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're doing a lot of skis in this one. A lot of ski ski. So, <laughs> let's get out of here. This one's gone long. <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking this would be uh, a, a, a tidy little show. I'm like, we've just got a couple of shows to talk about. This will be done within an hour. You know, it'll be one of those breeze episodes for people to get to. Instead, fucking almost two hours. I'm sorry, fans. I don't know how this yeah. happened. We we rambled. We like chatting with each other. It happens. Yeah, but I mean, it's been a little while since the last episode, so maybe maybe you were missing us. So this, this show is a, a beautiful little present for you. Like, yeah, this is good. This has tidied me over from that absence. I don't know. Anyway. We sated the hunger. Yeah, we satiated the hungry ear holes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we got to get out of here. Let's get Thanks out of here. Thanks for listening, Courtney. Yeah. Peace, everybody. <laughs> and good Swifty. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Done, done, oh, done. Fuck that little world.